Good morning, all. I like to take pictures. Here we have a West Stamp, three axis DC drive, and this is model number 33001 9. I have a 90 volt armature DC motor with a tack connected to the, this top axis right here. The variac is going into the bridge rectifier and I adjust the variac up until I have 90 volts DC across this bus capacitor. I don't go any higher than that because this is a 90 volt DC motor. I don't want to burn up my motor. It's the only one I have. <laughs> so on terminals 11 and 12 right here, and uh, I'll make drawings of my hookups and I'll put them up at the end of the video. But on terminals 11 and 12 here, I have 120 volts AC single phase to power up the control. So we have the Variac making a DC bus and 120 volts AC single phase powering up the control. Uh, each cord requires a plus or minus 15 volts DC and it's ground. That's created by this power supply right here transformer and regulation up here to create that plus and minus 15 volts DC. Now, uh, to run the axis, I have my connections right here, a speed potentiometer and TAC input from the TAC of that DC motor. There is an enable uh, yep. to close two inputs, I'll show you which ones they are, but I'm not going to worry about it because with those two inputs open, the drive runs. Uh, when you close those two inputs, the drive stops. So when I apply power, that motor is going to run. So two cooling fans are kind of noisy. But you can see we're running. Now with the speed potentiometer, I can control speed and direction. Let's go back the other way. Isn't that nice? Now the customer said that none of the axes would run. And they measured across the DC bus and they had zero volts DC. Well, without a bus voltage, that motor will not run. So there is something going on with the bridge rectifier input out there at the rest of the machine. There must be a contactor or something that has to close to apply that AC voltage to the input of the bridge rectifier. So they're going to have to troubleshoot their machine because this drive's working. Now I'll test the other two axes. Uh, off camera because they're just a repeat of what you see now.
taking a movie of a movie. <laughs> Now let's take a look at the waveforms out to the DC motor with the oscilloscope. I've got the fans disconnected because they're pretty noisy. Okay, we're running. Right, don't short your probes out. Spread that time out a little bit. Increase our waveform. There you go. Now you can see the transistors firing. And right here is the average DC applied to that motor from the drive. Pull it back the other way. I have to correct that triggering. Let me move the trigger up. There we go. We're locked in now. But zero volts. Yeah. Let me show you where zero volts is. Zero volts is right there, or just barely. We're still moving. And when I increase the speed, you see that goes, goes up from zero. Now we're running clockwise right now. Let's go counterclockwise and we'll go below zero. You see that? Clockwise. Counterclockwise. Isn't that fascinating? Okay, let's power down. I'll show you what happens if we get the armature or the tack backwards from each other. to reverse the armature wires. And we'll watch the motor run away. I won't leave it on for very long, but if you get the armature wires backwards from the tack wires, this motor will have no speed control. It will run away. I won't be able to control it with that speed potential on there. I'm not going to leave it on long enough. Uh, this is just for demonstrations purposes. You see that? <laughs> I just turned it off. <laughs> Let's straighten out our wires. So when you're hooking up your DC motor and tack wires, you want to make sure that, uh, that you have them properly wired. Otherwise your motor will run away. Might tear up your machine or get somebody hurt. Here we go. Now we have control.
There we go. There we go. This drive, there was nothing wrong with it. It just needed a DC voltage on the bus created by the line into the bridge rectifier. You're going to have to go troubleshoot their machine because there's no problem with this drive. Alright all, have a good rest of your day and we'll see you next time. and all here we're going to talk about the connections to make this West Stamp DC motor drive model 33001-9 run this motor now I showed three motors over here but I only had one motor uh, and it being connected to one and two when I was testing that first axis moving that motor to three and four uh, when I wanted to run the second axis and moving that same motor to five and six when I wanted to run that third axis only one motor but three are shown here's the tack input on uh, J1 uh, pins three and four, four being common. Now as you saw in the video, we don't want to get the relationship between this tack generator voltage and that motor voltage backwards because that motor will run away. <laughs> now down here on uh, pins eight and nine of J1, if eight and nine uh, contacts inputs are open that motor will run to stop that motor to disable that motor for running we close eight to nine but i didn't have no switch on eight and nine i just left it open and when we powered up that um, um, west amp dc motor that it automatically got up and go now here is our speed potentiometer I had the 10 kilo ohm uh, uh, resistor potentiometer right here plus 15 volts DC on pin 10 going to the wing of that potentiometer and minus 15 volts DC on pin 12 going to that potentiometer and the wiper of that potentiometer going back up here to pin 2 so when this voltage when i turn that potentiometer in the positive direction up toward plus 15 volts dc going into pin two that motor ran clockwise and when we move this potentiometer right here in the negative direction of negative 15 volts DC on pin 2 signal in that motor ran counterclockwise isn't that amazing <laughs> now let's get to talking about powering up this uh, uh, servo drive right here this three axis servo drive here on terminals 11 and 12 of Terminal board one, I had an input of 120 volts AC single phase on 11 and 12. And that powered up the drive, the controls of the drive. It, uh, it powered up the logic, it powered up the logic ICs, and it made this plus and minus 15 volts DC right here reference to pin 11 now the DC bus how do you bring up the DC bus there uh, people how do you bring up 
Well, let's go down here and take a look. Obviously, this is not how it's done in the machine. But here in the shop is how I create that 90 volt DC bus. There are three inputs to a three phase bridge rectifier over here. I don't have it drawn out, but you can use your imagination and picture a three phase bridge rectifier, a bus capacitor to power up, to apply, to create the voltages for the, that is required for those three axes on the power side that run that motor. So I have a Variac. This is adjustable from uh, zero up to whatever is required for your circuit. It has an input of 120 volts AC and the output based upon where I re rotate that knob. Now I can put me a voltmeter out here on these two terminals and I can adjust that variac until I have 90 volts uh, DC across the bus capacitor. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I put my meters, I put my meter out here on the bus capacitor. We have a, a, a bridge rectifier right here. I put my meter on the bus capacitor and I adjust this variac until my uh, meter says I have 90 volts DC across that bus capacitor. And that is the voltage that, uh, that I needed to run those, uh, to run that 90 volt DC motor. Phew! <laughs> Let's try to sneak up on those birds in the backyard there. We'll take a look at it.